Greetings from Lisbon. Uh, my name is Miguel Raimundo. Uh, I'm very pleased to make this contribution for the very first edition of VLAW. Uh, my topic will be the restrictions or limitations to freedom of religion in the context of the COVID crisis. While well, the impact of the, the crisis is in fun fundamental in human rights is obviously undeniable. It has, it has also been the case with freedom of religion or belief since in many countries, uh, public authorities have adopted measures aimed at limiting or forbidding access to places of worship or religious uh, services. So the purpose of my talk is to give some elements for thinking criti cri critically about this issue. Uh, I will focus mostly in some international law and EU elements while also giving some ideas about specific national discussions in some European countries. So, of course, freedom of religion is protected under international law. Uh, Article 18 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights guarantees this right, while also allowing governments to narrowly restrict religious freedom by law without any discrimination when necessary to protect, protect a legitimate state interest. This is done in Article 18, Paragraph 3. Article 9, paragraph 2 of the European Convention on Human Rights of 1958 provides for the same almost word by word. Both texts emphasize that freedom of religion does not entail only the right of belief, but also the right to worship, public worship, practice and observance of a religion. So these provisions apply in a sense to normal times. Of course, we're not living normal times. Uh, so the derogation clauses come into discussion. Uh, both the International Covenant and the European Convention provide for these derogation clauses. Um, with a difference, an interesting difference between them, freedom of religion is indicated in Article 4, Paragraph 2 of the International Covenant as a human right that cannot be derogated in such times. But that's not the case with Article 15, Paragraph 2 of the European Convention, which, which does not mention freedom of religion among the rights that cannot be derogated. The difference is, is that, of course, the International Covenant is thinking more about the freedom of religion in the sense of freedom of belief and the European Convention, what, what is usually called the Forum Internum, and the European Convention is thinking more about the so-called Forum Externum, or freedom of worship. Uh, so this is the, the reason why, obviously, freedom of belief cannot be restricted in any event, but it can, it should be defended that freedom of worship uh, is obviously susceptible to limitation. It seems difficult, it would be difficult or impossible to defend that the states could limit, for example, the freedom of movement or circulation or the freedom of assembly, and they would not be able to limit uh, the freedom of worship. Undeniably, collective religious services play a role in the dissemination of the virus, or they can. So this, as all other collective activities. So the question is not really whether we can or not restrict freedom of religion, but how should these restrictions or derogations to freedom of public and collective worship be made? Not a matter of yes or no, but how much limitation is acceptable? And the discussion is limited to worship. So this obviously calls into debate the, the need for a balancing exercise between freedom of worship on the other hand, on the one hand, and rights of others, uh, or the public interest in containing the pandemic on the other hand. So it is exactly in this last aspect that some doubts and concerns have been raised in light of the pra practice of some states. Uh, I would say the right balance seems difficult to find, in particular in the so-called reopening phase, which is the one most of our European countries are facing right now. I will give just three examples, Germany, France, and Portugal. Now, the German Constitutional Court, in the first decision handed down in April 10, admitted that restrictions on public worship in the state of Hesse were not in breach of the German Constitution. So the issue seemed solved. However, in April 29, the court admitted a cautionary measure against Lower Saxony in a similar case. The difference was that in the second case, the claimant argued that he was able to carry out public worship. He was the coordinator of, of a Muslim uh, religious community. He said that he could carry out 
these acts of public worship complying with sanitary measures, thus striking a balance between re religious freedom and public health, which the, the court found acceptable. Uh, in France, uh, we had a first decree of, of a presidential decree on the matter, which stated that even though places of worship remained open to the public, collective worship gatherings were completely forbidden. So on 18 May, the, the Conseil d'État, the French Conseil d'État, overruled the decree on the basis of proportionality. So one of the reasons for this was a clear breach of the principle of non-discrimination. For some activities, gatherings of up to 10 people were allowed, but such a possibility did not exist for religious services. In Portugal, we currently have the possibility for religious services to take place but not without controversy along the way. Uh, as was the case with other countries, there appeared to be a, a different treatment of religion compared to other activities. And this is not uh, at all uh, a peaceful uh, point because, for example, some non-essential stores and other businesses, uh, for example, were able to reopen more than a month before religious services. So, I would say some preliminary ideas can be drawn from the experiences in, in different countries. First of all, I would say there is a consensus, even among churches and other religious communities, that re restrictions to public worship are needed. So the discussion has been more on issues of proportionality and equal treatment. Secondly, uh, I would say that states seem on occasion too comfortable with closing down public worship sometimes in a very sharp contrast with allowing economic activities to reopen, which I think possibly reveals a misconception about public worship. Some states do not seem to realize the crucial importance in a religious person's life of practicing their faith and the suffering that comes from being deprived of it. So more constitutional reasons, not less, should be required to limit public worship as opposed to economic activities or sports, for example, or any other uh, exercise of the freedom of assembly. So the application of the balancing test of proportionality assessment seems in some cases flawed because it does not give freedom of worship the proper weight it has, which is different from other forms of assembly. Furthermore, also the necessity test of proportionality assessments is also doubtfully complied with in some regulations. This is revealed in the German decision I mentioned before. If it's possible for people to gather somewhere complying with sanitary measures and a religious community commits itself to following these measures, what is the reason for maintaining a rule of prohibition of public we should also, we should be very aware, I think, of situations where even indirectly, the states adopt a harder position with religious communities as opposed to other activities. Uh, I think the COVID crisis should not be an opportunity to, to enforce anti-religious feelings and prejudice against religion, like the prejudice that re religious people will not be so careful and will have more difficulty following sanitary rules. People should be treated as adults. Finally, uh, I think a topic of some concern, at least in some countries, regards the principle of separation between church and state or state and religion. Uh, in the Portuguese experience, I think we've seen situations that, I don't know, uh, six months ago would have been unthinkable. For example, we have the public health authorities nowadays giving specific and detailed guidelines on how religious services should be conducted. So we don't have a set of general rules applicable to all collective gatherings that state that, for example, you need to have certain distance or follow certain hygiene rules. You have specific guidelines made by the state that go as far as saying how should people uh, receive communion in a mass. So the COVID crisis should not be an opportunity for the state to implement anti-religious uh, discrimination, but it should also not be an opportunity for the political and religious spheres to overlap and lose their autonomy. Uh, because regardless of belief, I think, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's seems the best principle in order to protect freedom of religion in the states guided by the rule of law.